I got, uh, I was not telling Chris Matthews what we were covering soon, and I said something about, like, oh, yeah, like, at some point we're gonna do, like, Demon House, but we're gonna wait till like, all three of us are here. And he's like, this looks really stupid, I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> I was like, yeah. well, I was like, I guess you'll be caught up, but I was like, we're also gonna be doing Monster Nato soon and yeah. he was like well double feature for me tonight and i was like oh no <laughs> monster nato and zach baggins demon house yeah. perfect and uh i assume they're both terrible <laughs> uh something something zach baggins say hi to katie welcome to happy suffer why won't he say hi to me i'm so dedicated <laughs> i don't know you still me- you should message him on twitter and see what happens Sir, please. <laughs> <laughs> This is, I think, episode 311 of I Be Suffer. I'm Nathan. And I'm Katie. We are back at Ghost Adventures Land. Talking about 2023's Ghost Adventures Devil Island. Uh, at least for me, a way more interesting uh, yeah. episode than the two I've watched so far. <laughs> I think um this one is more representative of like I don't know, there were a lot of things that happened that made me laugh out loud. Um so this is this is kind of like the speed of most of the episodes, I feel like. I, I know I said that about whatever the other mountain of death, like death of of death or whatever, but this one is like there were some moments where I just like literally laughed out loud because I was like, uh, huh, what? The connections, the the web that he weaves is just so interesting <laughs> to me. <laughs> uh, the amount of times in this that he has to be like, and for you internet skeptics, I can prove that this isn't dust by saying it's not. Listen, <laughs> I was like, trust me when I down. say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't know. You're not really convincing me. No, not so, at all. <laughs> we'll see. Um, before we start, I have a snack corner. Are you familiar with Sour Punch? Uh, I, maybe? So, it's essential. Well, I don't know that, actually. It's probably not even something that you can eat. It's kind of like a gummy candy, the brand Sour Punch. And they're usually, like, straws like shaped like straws and they're sour candies right they're coated in sour stuff which you know i love but i got this one that's called sour punch bites so they're like smaller pieces of the straw um but the version i got is called pickle roulette uh so there's literally a whole bag of like green they're all the same color but they can be green apple lemon lime watermelon and uh pickle (laughs) <laughs> and I really want to, I really want to try them. So I'm gonna try and get a pickle, obviously. Um, but I haven't opened. Wow, it smells insane. Um, it kind of smells like the inside of like a pencil box, <laughs> which I don't know if that's. Um, I think this is lemon lime. I don't know how I'm gonna try and find a pickle. I'll just try a few, and if it doesn't happen for us, then it's not gonna happen. But are they are they all like the same They're color? Li- you know what? That might have been a pickle. They're literally the same color and shape and everything. And I'm trying to smell them, but because they're all mixed together, I'm wondering if this is like a situation where the flavors. Because you can see, like, the granules of salt on it, and I'm, or not salt, like, sour flavoring, and I'm wondering if the flavors just have mingled together. Mm, maybe. 
There's absolutely no way I got two pickle in a row. I feel like I sour candy mm -mm. and pickle would not work for me. So that one was definitely green apple. Ugh. The worst sour flavor. No, that one's lemon lime. Okay, so I am tasting flavors. So I think I did get a pickle first. And I don't think the flavor was that strong. That does not well, I don't know. I, for some reason, sour candy and like pickle flavor does, like, does not sound like it would be good to me. I mean... Pickles can be sour, so I no, feel I, like... Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. So, like, I, like, I'm thinking about, like, Sour Patch Kids and, like, those being a pickle flavored. For whatever reason, in my mind, it doesn't seem like it would, like... I don't know, it doesn't sound good to me. So, I will say... You have to chew them for a couple seconds for the actual flavor to come through. And I've definitely gotten pickle, and I think the problem is that it's just not a strong pickle flavor. And to that I say, stop being cowards... Like, I need the pickle to punch me in the face. It's a pickle. But, I don't know. The taste is, like, so mild. You could probably eat a, a bunch of them. And, like, it's not... It's not, like, a strong enough flavor for it to be, like... It's not, like, Warhead sour. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, man. Warheads are so good. They are. Well, I was less exciting than I expected, but... I can't believe I got a pickle the first time. All right. <laughs> All right, stop saying the word pickle. <laughs> pickle. I love pickles so much. Okay. All righty, so here we are, back with our Ghost Adventures Adventures number three. Um, I could not believe that this one was from 2023. Like, I've seen all of the specials, but for some reason in my mind... They're not, like, new, if that makes sense. I don't know. Well, but I also feel like... All, like, all of these pretty much just feel like regular Ghost Adventures episodes, but, like, maybe 20 minutes longer. So here's the reason I'm confused also. In the beginning of the episode, Zack says an unprecedented two-hour special. My guy, this is like the fifth or sixth special. They're all two hours. So, like, <laughs> that's why I was confused when I saw 2023. I was like, okay. I assume it's the, one of those things that, like, they do a special every, like, I don't know. Like, every, like, two years or something, it seems like. Yeah, and I think, um... I don't know, like, one of the reason, one of the things about this show, it's, like, one of those shows where it's, like, really hard to talk about or recommend a specific episode, because depending on what you're watching it on, it's one of those things where, like, there are different seasons or different episode kind of things, and um, one of the, sometimes they'll release the quote-unquote two-hour special as the beginning of a new season, and not include it as just something that you can search Ghost Adventures Devil Island or whatever as, like, a standalone part. So, like, maybe that's... Maybe this was, like, the first one that was a part of a season. But because of how, like, willy-nilly they are, I really have no idea. Because you can uh, search this... On yeah. uh, Discovery Plus, like, I had to watch it. It was, like, not part of, like, the regular season. It was, like, a whole separate thing. You had right, to search. right. But sometimes the specials, like, are part of the... Like, you can't search them separately. So I don't really understand, like, why yeah. they choose to do some separate and not, like... I yeah, I feel know. like it should be, like... The specials should be, like, say... Say their seasons run, like, a normal thing of, like... You know, October to March or whatever. Right. Like, uh, I could see them being like, Hey, here's, like, a, a special thing in, uh... Like... July or something that we we you know they did during the regular season they just made a special like to you know have a little thing in the summer or like during like the you know usually seasons will have like a winter break in like mid December through yeah the beginning of January or whatever yeah I don't know weird um. So, yeah, so this is something, this is one that you can just, like, search by itself. It's called Devil's Island, and 
Uh, the the like location that we're in is in San Francisco Bay, so of course, beautiful. Uh, yeah. They they actually um, the name of the island is called Angel Island, and it's essentially like they spend. The, the, this is like one. Of, this is why I was wondering if this one was originally part of the season and they took it out. Is because the beginning of it, there is a preview of like the interviews that they do and things that happen, which like normally they don't do that. They just like start with the episode or whatever with like Zach being like, I'm standing on the precipice of reality or whatever the fuck he's saying. And so that's why I was like, okay, this is weird. But essentially they spend like a while in the very beginning telling us about the history of the Island, which I'm not going to super go into except for to say that they um, describe it as the Ellis Island of the West, uh, except and I'm sure Ellis Island, like, I guess if you are not from the United States, like, maybe people don't know what that is, but it's essentially one of, like, the central hubs um, on the East Coast where, like, people who are immigrating to the, um, to Amer- to the America, to America would come through, and they would, like, in a lot of cases, like, give you a, quote-unquote, easier-to-pronounce last name, and that's how, like, a lot of people's names, you know, got changed and whatnot. And I'm sure that that was, like, not the greatest experience for people. <laughs> but the, but this is kind of like Ellis Island if it was evil because it was m- treated more like a prison. And uh, apparently the treatment of the people was really bad. At one point it was also, like, a civil war, like, barracks or some shit or something like that. So all that to say is, like, the idea behind it is that there's a lot of people who are trying to, like, better their lives coming to America through this system that is treating it terribly, which, no shocker there. But this is kind of, like, next level, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It was weird, because I had, like, no concept of this place. Like, I'd never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. And so, like... Like, like immediately they were like, oh, it's essentially like Ellis Island, but also a prison or whatever, where they were like, or, you know, and also like near, like it wasn't, isn't it like in the same bay or whatever as uh, Alcatraz? Alcatraz? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, this all sounds very American. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, Alcatraz obviously is, I don't know if they've gone to Alcatraz or like during a regular episode, but it is crazy to be at because I feel like there's a lot of um, history that people don't learn about about it that have to do with like you know people native to the land and whatnot which like we're dealing with that here but like thankfully not so much because I feel like a lot of times when ghost shows like this start talking like oh the you know about like anything like that I'm always like you need to be careful because a lot of times it's like I don't know, offensive, I feel, to, like, the way that they treat the material. And they don't really touch on it that much here, only because they become really, really hyper-focused on this one specific story about this uh, young girl. So um, that's what most of the story is based, like, the their investigation, so to speak, is, like, focused around, which I found very weird. Yeah. But they do tend to do that, like, latch on to stuff. Um so yeah, this is when Zach tells us that an unprecedented two-hour special, which, uh, as we know, there have been plenty, <laughs> so I'm not really sure. Um, the reason I mean, that I, this... So I guess, to be fair to him, not that he necessarily deserves it, <laughs> but, like, there are, like, fucking 900 seasons of this show, and there are only, like, seven specials. Sure. I think the difference is all of the specials happened in the last, like, three years. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I, I guess it is fair to be, like, unprecedented, you know, long special or whatever, but it's like, bro, like, uh, you've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven specials since 2020. <laughs> right, right. Okay, yeah, sure. And it's also, like, the your entire show started as a special. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that, like, to be fair, when they're going around and filming this, I think a lot of times they don't know when it's going to actually air. So say, you know, whatever. The thing that is... I, I, wa- in- I wonder if it's a thing where they film for, like, a season, 
And then when they're editing it, they're like, hey, we could, like, stretch this one out a little longer to be, like, a... Yeah, it could be. Like, you know, this was, like, an especially, like, crazy one or whatever. I wonder about that, too. Like, even when we're talking about something... Okay, let's let's just bring up something that we're all very familiar with, which is uh, Kitchen Nightmares. I wonder about that with, like, Kitchen Nightmares and, like, got um, uh, d- uh, dry- Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, where, like, we're seeing an episode that's, like, well, okay, Kitchen Nightmares obviously is like one whole episode is like the same restaurant, but Triple D is like multiple, but in different locations. So I do wonder, like, do they just go to an area, investigate everything that they're going to do there, and then piece it together later in the season, like out of order? Because it's like the travel has to be expensive and it has to be like hard on people, right? So like that could be another factor i don't actually know i do know that like that's basically what kitchen nightmares does because uh like especially being in new jersey now like i will get news updates it'll be like gordon ramsay spotted shooting kitchen nightmares mm-hmm. and then like you know you can see like especially I don't know, like, especially the last season he just did that's, like, a, for some reason isn't, a, like, attached to the old seasons of Kitchen Nightmares. It's like they made it a whole separate they, thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. almost all of it is, like, New York, New Jersey, and maybe, like, Philly or something. Yeah. And so, like, I, do, I know that, like, he essentially will just, like, set up camp for, like three weeks and shoot like a bunch of them and then they you know release them in like whatever order they decide so they're, they won't necessarily be like because you can watch like the old seasons of it and sometimes it's like one episode it'll be winter and the next episode it'll be like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. summer or whatever you know like the different weather stuff and shit so yeah i know he does that i'm assuming diners drive-ins and dives i've said they all kind of do that like yeah or like you know plan out very specifically like hey we're gonna go out for a month and film and it's all gonna be like this one area and then we'll you know come Jumble back and it up. figure out how it's gonna be edited together yeah tv magic <laughs> um so this is interesting in that though th- that the ghost adventures team is the first team that's been uh allowed on the island to investigate uh, a lot of the buildings have been closed up. So um, there's like not really like there's people who are there working on the island. But as far as I know, like anybody can get to an island, right? Just get on a boat. I don't know that you're wanting to boat across the San Francisco Bay, first of all. No. Uh, but you technically could. There's a lot of like noise that happens in this episode where they're hearing banging, they're hearing scuttling, this and the other, and my mind immediately goes to, like, animal. Like, there's still animals on islands, so... But there's not really people, well, so, like... So, like, that's the thing that's, like, interesting in this episode, is, like, a bunch of shit happens, but it's all, like... Like, shit where I'm watching it, I'm like, alright, well, you're all just, like, stomping around this place. Like, of course, yeah. like, you know, a two-by-four is gonna fall over that's, like, barely... Right. Like, barely propped up and shit and like yeah. i don't know it's weird like i i liked this one more than the other two we did but like the entire time i was like come on come yeah. on because like so right. like the thing like because caitlin has watched all three of these with me and like the thing we've talked about is like uh like i always go back to like destination truth because that's probably like the closest to something like ghost adventures i've watched and like there's numerous episodes of destination truth where like nothing happens Mm -hmm. which is why when there is an episode where they do find you know like something like a huge ass foot imprint or some shit feel like more like oh shit like they did find something and like i think the problem i have with ghost adventures is they're never not being haunted by something you know like there's always insane shit and i'm like this is like if you had, like, four episodes a season where just you went in, they're like, yeah, like, you know, this is nothing really happened. We didn't find anything. Sure, it'll probably be boring, but, like, I would believe your stories more than, like, the fact that every place you go to, you're somehow being fucking possessed by yeah. everything. And 
I feel like what sets it really apart, like I'll go back to Ghost Hunters because that was like the very first one that I watched. And um, well, when we first moved to Florida, I was like rewatching through that show from the beginning. I only made it like six or seven seasons or whatever, but there are a lot of those where nothing happens because like I've talked about in the past, like they're really like, obviously it's a TV show, right? They're getting paid to be on TV, but they really go in there trying to help people. And like the point of them being there is to try and like debunk what's happening versus so there are a lot of things where it's like oh this door slammed shut okay the ground's not level so when you're stepping on this board it's it's like causing the the door jam to whatever so it's like stuff like that so you're not getting a lot of activity that's not like that's unexplainable which again makes that show when there's something that the guy and they're also the um main guys of that show are not like screaming and running around and being scared and shit and having heart <laughs> attacks right they're very like they're oh. not scared <laughs> they're just like <laughs> I, I watched this like two days ago and i already forgot about dude being like i think i'm having a heart attack and just, <laughs> just running away <laughs> yeah uh they're just like normal guys so when something happens that's unexplainable to me i'm like okay like one of my favorite episodes of ghost hunters um and not coincidentally because i live by it is the saint augustine lighthouse uh where they have stuff that they were just like i don't know like i really don't know what to tell you and i love that episode and i'll like rewatch it over and over again um but this is like the opposite where they something happens and then they try to like link it to something else and a lot of times it makes no sense which uh you know you gotta you gotta respect because <laughs> you gotta respect the game it is just definitely very different um there's another show that i watched called uh, uh might be like kindred spirits or something like that and i watched all of the seasons of that but that one's crazy because they do um, they do it in this episode of Ghost Adventures a lot more than they than they normally do, which is where they just have the tape recorder and they ask questions out loud and then re- listen back to the recording to see if they picked up anything versus like the spirit box or the ovalis, which responds to them like automatically, right? And the thing that's like crazy to me is that, and th- and and this is why I don't believe it at all. Every single episode, they're having like full on straightforward <laughs> conversations with people through. They'll be like, what's your name? John. John. Uh, or, or, or like, do you live in the house? And he's like, yes. And then they're like, well, why are you still staying here? And it's like. Closure. Oh, he needs closure. Let's do it for him. And I'm like, absolutely not. Like, you're not convincing <laughs> me at all. If anybody is. It's Ghost Hunters. Yeah, I would, I would really I love to see, like, an episode where they just go in and, like, literally nothing happens. I, I, and I said this, like, in the first special that we did, at least in the very beginning of Ghost Adventures, I, I do remember there being episodes where, like, back before they were really popular and it wasn't as sensational, where, like, a lot of stuff didn't happen. And I feel like uh, Zach definitely and the guys kind of, like presented a stronger front whereas now they freak out about anything that happens right right so like and like listen i get it i'm not going into an abandoned building and at nighttime like with a like i'm absolutely not doing that if i hear a sound i'm gonna freak out too however i have not done like a hundred thousand investigations at this point that you should know if there's a scraping sound, like, you don't need to scream and run. You well, know what I mean? Yeah, but I also feel like if I was in an abandoned building by myself at night and I heard some kind of noise like that, I would assume it was, like, a person or an animal. Not or a immediately be like, oh, my God, it's the devil. It's a demon. <laughs> it's BL's above thyself. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay. Uh, like I said, this is the first time that a investigation team is allowed on the island. A lot of the buildings have been completely shut up to people, um, and they're getting access to it. And this is when Zach tells us it's the most dangerous and scariest ever. Like, how many t- Like, <laughs> at some point, it's not true, you know? Uh, so they are on the way to catch the ferry that's going to take them to Angel Island. And uh, Zach gets a call that they need to immediately go to interview this woman because she's only available right now at this very minute. 
And after they find this out, Billy immediately almost gets into a head-on collision. That's um, so funny. <laughs> this episode just starts with him almost getting in an accident. I love the idea that Zach is, like, on speakerphone holding his phone, and it's, like, ch- plugged into the car to, like, charge. I don't know why. It's just, like, a like girly things, you know? He's just a girly pop. He's, like, talking to them on speakerphone. He's like, we need to go right now on the way to the ferry. And, like, they show us the quote-unquote crash, and it didn't really seem like they were actually in that much, much danger. But Zach is freaked out for the rest of the episode because he says that the car was coming right at his face. Yep. <laughs> that's pretty much what happens um okay so they go oh and then they tell us he's like man things things have been crazy like uh uh, we almost just got into this accident billy yesterday got robbed while he was in the car (laughs) what is happening here Somebody walked up to the back of the car, busted in the window, and tried to steal their gear and stuff. And I get... They didn't... They don't explain it any further, but I'm assuming that, like, once they realized he was in the car, they, like, ran or whatever. But I was just like, get Billy away from the cars, first of all. He shouldn't be driving. Uh, And then they just say someone else on the crew uh, immediately had a death in the family. And so Zach, of course, is wondering, is it a curse? As you do. (laughs) Um, anyway, yeah, it's just it's whatever fucking possessed him and took his eyesight still coming after him. Yeah, and his lungs, you know? Um, is the, okay, so this is when we get into, like, the real depths of Angel Island, like, how it was founded. I'm not going to go into all of it, basically just to say that it's bad. Uh, it was more like a prison than it was, like, a sanctuary for people who were trying to start new lives. We immediately go to Fel- this woman named Felicia's house, who's the one that's only available this second. Uh, I would love to say I I love her. She's an activist. She's a documentarian. She had family that came through Angel Island, and I would love to say she's an asset. But they don't really ask her any questions. Uh, we find out the things that I just told you, and then they cut away from her. Yeah. They interview so many people in this episode, and not a single person tells us information that Zach has not already told us via voiceover. So I'm like, let them tell the story. Why are you, like, what is going on here? Yeah, so they we got like 20 minutes of those fucking twins telling their story in the oh my God. <laughs> fucking Lake Mead one we did. <laughs> <laughs> that one was wild. Uh, yeah, we don't literally or, hear like, actually... Or, literally an hour of the fucking Tiger King people talking. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Zach does ask her if she believes that the island is haunted, and she says yes. That's the new information we get from her. I'm sure she's amazing. Um, so then some other guy tells us a story about a woman named Tamia who was on the island. She was what they're calling a quote-unquote bride-to-be... But something happened where they were not going to... They, they basically were going to deport her back to, I assume, Japan. I don't know if they actually said. And um, instead of being deported, because she just was so sorrowful, sor- sorrowful over not being able to get married, she puts on a wedding dress and she hangs herself. Uh, and Zach says that she is now known as the White Witch. We never get con- it, Like, because she's wearing a white dress, like, I don't really understand. <laughs> Like, that's the story we get. Um, If that happened to her, I'm so sorry. Leave this woman alone, okay? She's been through enough. Um, Then they make a whole show about how the fairy is about to leave without them. There's some weird encounter on the street with the captain of this boat. And I'm assuming they know him from some... uh, Like, maybe they did go to Alcatraz. I should have looked that up because I don't remember. Maybe he was, like, the same guy that took them to Alcatraz or something. Like... They make this, like, joke about how Zach is like, oh, no, different. I need a different captain. But, like, they don't explain the joke to us if we don't already know what's supposed to be funny about it. Um, uh, Zach then, again, reminds us that he's scared of deep, dark water. So if you'd like <laughs> to hear more about that, you can listen to our previous Ghost Avengers episode. The only, um, only fucking relatable thing. <laughs> right, yes. Um... Zach is now wearing a huge hat and he tells us that this investigation is like 20 episodes in one. (laughs) Stupid. So you know it's about to get real, right? So now they do an interview with a 
former employee who tells us about the White Witch again, gives us no new information about this woman or what happened to her, because like we said, we already heard that story, except he does add uh, the info that um, they actually, this is like a secret, it's like a tongue-in-cheek thing, that they actually refer to Angel's Island as Devil's Island. Oh, Don't tell man. anybody. Um, his experience is that he was in a warehouse that they converted into a gym and he heard a blood curdling scream. <laughs> Zach wonders if it is audio residue of the agony of war. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> I have no idea. Don't know. Uh, so we're going to a couple locations on this island. It is kind of huge. Like, obviously, there was a lot of people, there was like a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, one of the locations is a Civil War hospital, which, no thank you. Like, I, if you know anything about the Civil War, it was probably the grossest place ever. <laughs> uh, um, they go down into the morgue where a historian tells us that probably the th this is this is the story that they latch on to because for some reason billy was doing research about the island and he read about the story and he just is so connected to it and hasn't gotten it out of his mind this is a story we find this out later because they're like giving us just snippets right now but essentially there was this young girl named emma she was 15 uh she was like somebody's daughter and they were um having dinner and there was this man named fritz kimmel or something like that a grown man who was infatuated with her and the story goes that he just was like trying to get her attention and she just wouldn't give it to him uh you know because she's a child she's 15 and he just didn't like that so he went and got a gun and shot her and then shot himself that's the story that's the thing that's going on here and um the historian is like this is probably where they brought the bodies afterwards <laughs> of course okay Right. Okay. Pro I, the morgue, I would guess, but you don't actually even know. Um, so we we get this story twice, like because the guy is like, this is probably where the bodies came of these these people who were victims of a murder suicide. A separate ranger, who's like a park ranger of the area, tells us the exact same story that we just heard, but like gives us a little bit more detail, I guess. This is when Billy tells Emma's spirit that sh you sh you could just get out of here. You don't gotta, you don't have to stay here. Why don't you just come with us? And uh, this is when we learn that Billy has an attachment to the story. Okay, they decide that they're gonna start using the they call it the puck. Um, it's an obelisk, which is the thing where you talk and then it like tells you words from a data bank database. <laughs> Whatever. That's so weird. Such a fucking yeah. weird instrument so they they have i will say too they use a lot of instrument like m like stuff in this episode that they don't really use a lot um because there's another one that's exact that's essentially the same thing as the obelisk but instead of talking and then it responding to you with a word you type in a question and it responds which seems more sus to me because i don't know like i feel like you could just like program it to search for keywords but why couldn't you do that with the voice one i don't know i don't know how it works it's science i guess yeah but uh they take out the puck uh where uh zach asks emma where she is and the display responds car and they're like oh my god didn't you tell her didn't you invite her to follow you billy wouldn't that be the funniest thing ever if you were like hey spirit like you don't have to stay here and be tormented why don't you just come home with me and the ghost is like say less i'm gonna go wait in the car <laughs> i'm gonna remind you that they like came by boat so her saying car means absolutely nothing in this in this context um and they're like oh my god oh my god then they ask is she the uh, reason we almost got in a car accident see they don't even make that connection yeah that's the first thing i would have thought of right oh my god billy didn't you almost head like crash us head on into you another almost car put a car right in my face <laughs> it was coming right in my face i will say san francisco is extremely scary to drive in so i don't i'm not surprised at all that they almost got into a collision um then they ask what's inside the house and it says horrible 
Well, um, they also do a spirit box session where somebody tells them that they need to leave. Great. There's EMFs. They take it, an EMF reader all over this place, and it is spiking left and right. So just assume that it, that's happening every single time. Um, Billy's, Billy feels something inside his ear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like that, I will say. No, no thank you. Um, the obelisk uh, gives them the words cross over, remove, and master. So, of course, they're thinking that this is Emma saying, I want to cross over, but you need to get rid of this Fritz guy. Help. And they're like, oh, my God, they're freaking out, of course. Um, Zach finally, like, essentially, they're also having uh, problems with their equipment. It's like being all finicky. You know, they're doing that thing where they're saying, like, this was a fully charged battery and the battery is not working and this isn't turning on. And I'm like, I got to say at this point. Like, this kind of happens a lot, so right. maybe it's just your shitty equipment. I don't know. Maybe you just literally um, forgot to charge your equipment and are saying right. you didn't. You're, you're, you're trying to, like, make up for it. <laughs> um, Zach thinks that the spirit box also is telling them that they're inside a haunted house. Um, I gotta say that a lot of these, like, spirit box, like, voice anomaly things that they play for us, they replay and replay and replay. And even when they're telling me what they think it says, like, I can't force myself to hear it. So, um, I don't know. Take, take that, take that with you all. <laughs> the next day, the ranger tells them that they need to check out this house that they're calling the ritual house, uh, because somebody painted occult symbols upstairs. Uh, when they're walking into the house, Billy sees a bone wind chimes and Zach says, could this have been Fritz Kimmel's house? What? Uh, What? <laughs> What does that have to do with Fritz Kimmel at all? I don't know, but I like that all the occult symbols were painted like a, like, kindergarten class. Like, they're all, like, so, weird and, like, bubbly looking. It's so weird to me because uh, when they were talking about there's occult symbols, I'm picturing spray paint. Like, somebody just went up there with a can of spray right. paint and did, like, a pentagram or some shit. And I'm like, okay, yeah, it was, like, obvious, obviously just children. But this is, like, somebody painted symbols like you would paint a mural on a wall. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. It, it was it That, to me, was a little strange. But the ranger is basically telling them that they were trying to renovate the house. And as we all know, renovations can sometimes kick up spiritual energy because they don't like what you're doing. Do not paint my house beige, Okay. That's essentially what hap what happens. And so she says, like, we're trying to, like, renovate the house for people to live here, and just stuff keeps happening. She doesn't elaborate as to what's happening, what the activity is, but she does also tell us that they were uh, too afraid to paint over the symbols because they didn't know what they meant, so they just, like, left them. And I was like, I don't know about that either, but <laughs> sure. Um... They start to go up the stairs to look at the symbols, and Zach sees, in his mind, a crunched-over woman on the stairs. I, I don't like the sound of, like, a crunched-over woman on the stairs, but, like, <laughs> all right. Uh, so they go upstairs, and again, so so the symbols are literally painted as if this, this were a mural type thing, but, like, some of them aren't done completely either. And so they take pictures of all the symbols and decide that they're going to take some time to research them. <sighs> Jay, I, I don't, I, I can't say that they were symbols that I have ever seen or recognized um, as like a normal part of like what you would think of quote unquote occult symbols, right? Uh, and they're weird. And Jay is saying that he researched them and they, one of the symbols is, is attached to Aleister Crawley. We don't really have time to go into what, who he is. So just Google him if you don't know the name. Um, but they're essentially saying that there's like this, like one part of this, like religion that he found. And, um, they're connecting the symbols to a goddess, uh, I think that they're saying that the goddess's name is Babylon. Uh, and her husband is chaos and he creates chaos. And Zach says, so it's a man and a woman, just like in the murder suicide. You got it, Zach. Yep. 
You got it. Okay. Uh, then Jay goes on to say that it's, like, really strange because the symbols are all drawn incorrectly. One of them is inverted. One of them is, and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, my God. If you drew those with your intentions, this, that, and the other. And they're, like, really looking into it. And in my mind, I'm like, it's probably just some random person who was like, I'm going to do these symbols. And they just did it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> they just printed like, them up upside down on accident. They, like, they were using, I'm not even kidding you, they were probably using a fucking stencil and just put the stencil on incorrectly. Because it looks, like I'm saying, a mural, it doesn't look sloppy. Like, it looks like it was drawn using, like, a stencil or something. So... It literally looks like, um, like, all I could think about was the terrible murals in Parks and Rec. (laughs) <laughs> like it's that weird sort like like one of them is like a bright blue it's not like somebody just like used like black spray paint like you said earlier it was literally yeah. just like it looks like something you would see in like a kindergarten class or like in yeah. a school mural I um I don't know if this is the proper term for this game if it's been updated at all but it looks to me like the board of like what they would call Chinese checkers that like star thing Yeah but but like Somebody just freehanded it because it's like whack. Like the proportions are wonky, but they're like this one symbol, like in the middle of it. It's like bright red and blue. They're like this is the goddess of the devil or some shit. And I'm like, what are you guys even talking about? <laughs> they don't know. Um, th- no. Uh, Zach says, are we dealing with a beast on this island? Yep. I really, uh, probably maybe a wild boar or two, I would say. Uh, he goes on to kind of like say, like, is it a beast? Is it opening portals everywhere so that things are coming out and doing this, that, and the other? Um, probably not would be my answer. But um, so now they're going to split up famously, right? Billy and Aaron are going to go uh, um, investigate the hospital. Zach and Jay are going into the warehouse that used to be a gym. Um, they're going to go in there to set up a mic, a a boom mic. He explains to us multiple times what a boom is and like an infrared camera. And then they're going to go to the ritual house. Right. Okay. (sighs) Essentially, Billy and Aaron use the XLS camera. Um, Aaron gets what he calls double chills and also sees the shadow of a woman with long hair. Uh, Zach tells us that they could not corroborate the shadow the shadow because they didn't catch it on film um great thank you for telling me that um zach and jay like literally this is just five minutes of zach and jay like walking through this like um warehouse and like hearing noises like banging and like type sounds for like five minutes and then going what is that and like spinning around and shit um (laughs) <laughs> yeah there's more there's like more spirit box shit there's like light anomaly anomalies everywhere um they go inside a building that has been like previously locked to the outside and they see what they describe as a black mist and uh catch more crashing sounds in this building that like i said is supposed to be completely locked up and abandoned which i don't know whatever <laughs> Um, Billy and Aaron get a spirit box that says, okay, so they're investigating the hospital, right? They're downstairs in the morgue. They're like, oh, this is weird. Let's go investigate. They go back upstairs. Like, nothing's happening. And they're like, let's go back downstairs. The spirit box comes through and says, not all the way down. Uh-oh. As they're, as they're trying to go to the basement. And they're like, oh, my God. Like, Aaron is having the most fun of his whole life. Like, every single thing that happens, he's like, oh, my God, dude, did you hear that? And he's, like, fucking screaming, right? And um, so they're like, don't go all the way down. Like, don't go down to the basement. And then they get another vo- uh, spirit box voice that says, not a woman, which he thinks is somebody trying to tell them that the spirit that they think is Emma may not actually be Emma. And it might be an evil entity. Yep. What a reach. <laughs> like, what is that? No, he's right. What? Probably. Um, this is where we get a light anomaly that Zach tells us skeptics could not possibly be a dust or a bug 
Because it's the only light anomaly that that camera has ever picked up. Fair. Okay, solid solid proof. <laughs> I believe now. Like, like what? I'm going to say there's one light anomaly in this entire episode that I myself cannot explain away. And we'll get to it. Uh, this one is definitely just uh, dust, I right? I don't know. He told me. As an internet he did, skeptic. Yes, he did. It's clearly not it's a not, bug. It's like, listen, he said, Nathan, this yep. is not a bug. And I was like, shit, called out. Uh, so now they bring this other guy who is an engineer, they tell us, named Jeff, <laughs> who is standing in some other house. And he's like, the ghost of Fritz, please come here to this house where the murder happened. He's calling. He's calling the spirit, right? This is when they capture a mist leaving the hospital. This one is clearly a bug. Like, you can see the wings on it. Because, you know, they replay it multiple times. It's literally bug-shaped. Like, I don't know how more bug-shaped you can get <laughs> than this mist that they're seeing. And I love how, like, normally they would just say light anomaly for everything. There's a lot of quote-unquote mists going on in this episode there's no mist i will tell you that um let's see okay so they're at uh jay and zach are at the ritual house right and zach has gone in to like set up a camera or something and he's been in there for like half an hour so jay's like what the fuck like let me go let, like let me go see what's going on so <laughs> this would scare this would i'm not even kidding though <laughs> this would freak the fuck out of me so jay goes in there and he's like zach and he's like looking around downstairs and he slowly pans the camera up the staircase zach is just standing there staring in the darkness i would pee my pants if i saw that that is so <laughs> scary but he's just like standing there with his like glowing eyes like not saying anything and jay's like Zach, what are you doing? And Zach's like not answering. And then all of a sudden Zach gets mad. And he's like, Jay, why aren't you answering me? I'm standing here talking to you. And Jay's like, no, you're not. I was talking to you. And then they just start like arguing. Zach is freaked out because he's lost time. Yeah. <laughs> and he says that it hasn't happened to him since Devil, the Devil's Den which is the episode we originally were going to do. So I was like, that's spooky. <laughs> <laughs> then they, Zach is kind of just like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Like that was weird. Like I lost time or whatever. And then Zach looks up the stairs and just starts saying, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Like, what are you talking about, sir? So they don't explain that. He's going to fight. So the just, ghost. Go ahead and do it. Do it, all right. Um, Aaron and Billy meet Jeff at the house where the murder took place, and um, Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry. Aaron is feeling weird, as Aaron tends to do. Um, this is the scene. This is the part where like they catch a, a anomaly that I agree does not look like a bug or dust because it's like wispy. But the more I'm thinking about it, the more it could be, like, a disturbed cobweb. You know how they kind of, like, float down? Like, they float in the air? Yeah. And if, if they're in buildings that have not had access to people, like, as you're watching it, it does not look... It, it, like, clearly has more of a shape and looks, like, gauzy. So that's why now I'm thinking maybe it is, like, a spider web. That's the only thing I could really think of. But it does look weird. It's a weird shape. There's, like, two different pieces of it on the screen. So I will give that to them. Eh, it's a light anomaly. It's clearly right. a ghost. It's an orb. It's a spirit. Um, this is when uh, they spend, like, ten minutes telling us that um, Aaron, Billy, and Jeff are just, like, really frustrated and they can't figure out how to do the introduction on the show about this experiment that they're trying to do because they basically freak out because this thing that they're calling the Tesla coil turned off and on by itself. It absolutely can't do that because there's switches and buttons you have to press and so they're freaking out about it. They're just talking around in circles and I'm like enough like 
can you just figure it out, right? Because, like, I guess if you haven't seen this show before, like, as stuff is happening, regardless of whether Zach is the one in frame or not, he's doing voiceovers the entire time. So the entire time that, like, the three guys are in this separate building, like, arguing, Zach's like, they can't figure out how to do the intro. So, like, right. So that's, like, kind of how it how it's going here. Um... Zach decides he's going to go back into the building with essentially what are essentially like super headphones. Uh, they're just like really magnified so that he could like <laughs> technically <headphones>. hear. <laughs> I don't remember what they called them, but it was essentially like it amplifies the, the sound around him. So he could like hear a ghost voice is, a, is like essentially what they're saying. Right. And a full spectrum camera, uh, which whatever. And um, he freaks out over hearing a female voice. <laughs> he likes to do that. Okay, so now we come back to the scene with the Tesla coil, and they explain to us that essentially the Tesla coil generates energy uh, by putting off static and EMF. Uh, so that essentially they're like supercharging the air with um, energy that they think will the the ghost will be able to like use to manifest. Um, here's my question. Even if that worked, like if you're in an if you're in a like in doing investigation where all you can talk about is how like dark the energy is and like maybe there's demons here, like why would you want to give it more energy? Uh, I mean, how else are you gonna get uh possessed? Light and shit? Yeah, you get all this like well, true shit happening. So so essentially, what happens is that they turn on this device and. Like, this takes forever because the guy turns it on and it's not turning on. They can't figure out how to, like, f fucking use it. They're arguing constantly. Billy's like, I'm not standing in the circle. And Aaron's like, ah, you said someone had to... They're just, like, literally going on and on and on and arguing as they do, right? Because they, they just... They absorb the aggression that's in the air around them, so to speak. And I was like, maybe it's just because you guys uh, travel and work together too much, but that's just me. Uh, so finally they like start this machine up and immediately the guy Jeff is like weird. Like he can't stand up all the way. He like looks like he lost his balance. Like he's not looking good. He's looking disturbed. And Billy's like, you know what? Oh, he starts like kicking dirt in the corner and Billy's like, hey, could you not disturb the dust? <laughs> yeah, we gotta like, we gotta do that off camera so then we can say there's anomalies in the that's right. <laughs> exactly. And Billy's like, you know what? I'm getting a headache. Why don't you just turn the machine off? So essentially, we just spent like 20 minutes with this Tesla coil thing that literally does nothing. Um, okay. Now Jay decides they're, he's back with Zach at the ritual house uh, up in the room with the symbols <laughs> where he decides that he's going to do a seance. Smart. Why not? They light a bunch of candles, he's ringing a bell, he's saying stuff in Latin, he's calling Babylon and whatever. Zach tells us that him and Jay suddenly feel a strange sense of ecstasy, and they just start giggling into the camera. There's like a couple of minutes of them, it's like POV, Jay's camera pointed at them, and they're just like giggling, and it is the weirdest fucking thing. Um... Uh, so they're like, okay, yeah, the spirits appreciate us or whatever. And so they're like, okay, let's just keep investigating. They're like, they're like giddy as schoolboys at this point. Uh, then Zach, uh, and if it couldn't, if it wasn't good enough, Zach catches a voice on the spirit box that says, Zach, you're awesome. <laughs> the the um, ghosts are fans. They love him. They're like, I can't believe you're here, Zach. You're awesome, right? And so Zach says, we can guarantee it's the spirit we conjured. Absolutely it is. Um, then they catch uh, uh, randomly downstairs. They've got a stationary camera down there. They hear like a sound. They show us that it's just like a paint can randomly falling off a shelf, which is weird. Um... Aaron and Billy use the obelisk where uh, they hear, where they see the word homicide. Of course, they freak out. And then the word us. Again, not really. I think uh, it's whatever. 
Okay, so the next day they regroup. They all stand in a really, really big circle, and they kind of go over the experiences that they've had, um, which, you know, have been crazy. Um, so, like, for some reason, they're like, Zach is like, Jeff, you've been through enough. Like, don't worry about it. You can sit this one out. Zach, Aaron, and Billy are all going to go to what they've called the Thousand Man Barracks. And they're going to send Jay off by himself for some reason. I was like, that doesn't seem like a good idea, but okay. Um, they're going to go to the Thousand Man Barracks. We get a flashback of an interview that we never saw. We've never met this person. Uh, who just tells us that um, there was an experience there where somebody was sleeping in a bed and they got pulled out of the bed. I was like, you're showing us every other interview. Like, why not just throw this, like, this, she was a, like, what? Very weird. Very weird decision here. <laughs> um, they're, they're outside of the barracks. Zach is, of course, freaked out um, by the menace of the building, right? Um, Billy asks the spirit box, like, or it might, I don't know, whichever fucking device they're using at this point. Uh, this I think this might be the one where he you type it in. He says, where are the souls kept? And they say, island. Okay. He asks something else where the answer is war. Okay, sure. And then he says, who is following us? And the, and the box says, witch. <laughs> I'm telling you, leave this woman alone, okay? She's been through enough. Okay, so Jay is just alone in some random place. I don't know where he is, but he's hearing what he uh, describes as whispering chatters. No, I don't like that. I don't think. Yeah, no, thank That's you. fine. I'd be okay without that. Um, so, so back to like Zach and the, and the boys, they're investigating and there's a few minutes of like nothing really happening. And then all of a sudden Aaron hands Billy his camera and says that he's having a heart attack and literally runs off. <laughs> it's so chaotic because he's like, he like, st- and Aaron is very tall. Like he is a tall guy and he comes like stomping up and he's like, I'm having a heart attack and fucking runs off. And Billy's like, what? And Zach's like, what? And they're like panicking because like, of, they don't know what's happening. Like they're, and then they're talking about how like, yeah, they're panicking. They don't know what's happening with him. They don't know where Aaron went. And they're like, he doesn't have his camera. He doesn't have his camera. Like, okay. And then they start feeling a patch of coldness. And they're like, oh, my God. It's like a portal. So after they spend a couple minutes freaking out, they finally find Aaron. And Aaron walks back up, like, holding his hand to his chest. But, like, I think the wrong side of where you have heart. I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember what side he's... Um, but either way, he's holding it, and Billy's like, what happened? Where did you go? And he's like, I told you. I told you when I handed you my camera. Didn't you hear me? And he's like, no. And he goes, I thought I was having a heart attack, and I just had to get out of there. And Billy goes, how could, why would running help if you were having a heart attack? And that was, like, my exact thought. I was like, wouldn't you want to, like, sit down and, like, have a moment? But, like, your first thought is I'm having a heart attack. I need to run. run into the dark. <clears throat> literally run into the darkness uh and i anyways i thought that was really funny and and aaron was like i don't know i just knew i had to go and then they do this like slow-mo where aaron like walks up to them he like saunters up to them and and zach says aaron walks up with an extremely dark energy and they like slow-mo on him looking like Rrr. it was crazy um okay this next part might be my favorite because Zach tells us no less than five times that this is the most chilling thing. This is the most (laughs) chilling audio to date that they have ever experienced. It's terrifying. It's the most scary thing that they've ever caught on audio. And the thing that it is, is that they get a voice on the spirit box. That is a little girl saying, I love you. (laughs) Terrifying. So scary. I love you. And the thing is, like, I think that they're trying to connect us to Emma. And I will say, Emma was a child, but she was 15. This is, like, the voice of, like, a seven-year-old saying, I love you. It's, like, really high-pitched. And then it says, you love me? Question mark. And Zach just can't get over how haunting and terrifying and chilling and how this is, like, one of the scariest things that's ever happened to them in <laughs> the history of the show. And I'm like, okay. But you sure. can't see or breathe properly <clears throat> because you're possessed. But this... 
little girl's voice saying I love you is the scariest thing that's ever happened to him. And, like, <laughs> I get it because there's, like, this trope in paranormal what have you where a lot of times a spirit or something will manifest as a small, usually a young girl, in order to get people to trust them, and it turns out to be a demon. Like, it happens time and time again. So I'm assuming that, like, maybe that's kind of, like, what he's getting at, but he doesn't elaborate on it at all. And so, to my mind, it's just, like, a little girl saying, I love you is the scariest thing. He, you know, I don't know. Very strange. Just, like, the amount of time they spent telling me how scary this was about to be, and then it was, I love you. I was like, okay, I guess <laughs> if you have problems with commitment, it would be pretty scary, but I don't know. Um, okay, Zach gets possessed again. Um, you know, he, whatever. He I gets possessed again. I don't remember him being possessed in this. Well, possessed in that there's, like, moments where he just, like, stands there and stares and acts like he can't hear what people are saying to him. So, like, in his mind, he's being possessed <laughs> because he's, like, losing time and whatever. Um... Oh, I need to find the episode because I don't think it's a special, but there's one where Zach gets, like, possessed, and he's, like, and he, like, comes at somebody, like, pretending to be a bear, kind of, and it is the greatest thing ever. There's one that played after the Tiger King one when I was in the ER that they're in, like, a hospital or something that I think that happens to him. Okay, I, maybe it was, that's... It was him or maybe, like, the, the guy that says he has the heart attack in this. Aaron. Somebody yeah, somebody gets possessed and starts like screaming at the other one, but like in a weird deep voice. Mm-hmm. I remember I can't remember like what the I was gonna say Zach at. and Aaron get possessed kind of a lot, yeah. so it really could have been either of them. <laughs> um Yeah, okay. Now they're showing footage of Jay laying in a bed talking about his face rotting off. I don't know what is going on with him here. He's trying to talk to Babylon again. And I was like, all right, Jay. Um, <laughs> this is when they're, they're like, okay, the next thing we have to like investigate in the barracks is the basement. And Zach goes up to it and he's like, this is the scariest job in the entire world. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, Zach. And he goes, he says to the camera, would you go in this basement right now? And I said, absolutely not. And then he goes, I didn't think so. I'm going to go in. And I was like, okay. I, like, I get it. It's I would not be doing it. That's for sure. You don't know what kind of like spiders are there. And as we talked about many moon ago, uh, San Francisco has all kinds of, all the spiders. All of the spiders that you can have, San Francisco has. So... Street tarantulas, black widows, like, you name it, they have it. I'm not going into an abandoned basement on an island. So, you know. Um, they go in the basement. They do, and they get a they get a XLS figure on the floor. And now I'm, th I'm ho like, when you're... There are certain, like, times when they use it where it's, like, very more obvious than others that they're using the equipment improperly and so that's why they're getting like the weird things that they're getting right there have been times where they've been, like had the camera pointed at stationary and something shows up and like dances around or whatever the fuck that are less obvious these the two that they get here to me are very obvious because they're so glitchy that i feel like how could you not just know that it's like glitching right because like we talked about it's trying, its job is to map people. So it's just like your um, Snapchat filters where like it's going to take even something that like is a, any tiny semblance of a face and make the filter on it, right? And so they like are showing it down this hallway, but they're like moving the camera around and stuff and like a, like a figure appears on the floor, but then it's like stretches out and like flies up into the whatever. And they're like, oh, this spirit. And I was like, okay, guys, let's like, Let's, let's maybe leave the XLS stuff out of it, <laughs> <laughs> you know? More EMF, EMF spikes down here. Um, so they're, they're down in the basement. Nothing else is really happening, and Zach just has such a calling that he needs to leave the basement. Uh, not because he's scared, 
But he needs to go back upstairs because he needs to help the little girl. The little girl who said, I love you. That was the scariest thing he'd ever heard. He, like, needs... He's just, like, feeling this maternal pull to go up there and, like, help her. Uh, This is when he catches... He's, like... He's, like, swinging the camera to his left, and he catches a board falling, and then a light anomaly zooping away from the board. (laughs) So it's, like, obviously a spirit knocked over that board. Of course. It's the only logical conclusion. And just to prove to us that the board was there before, they show us uh, a shot of when they were entering the building where the board was. The board is leaning very precariously up against the wall. (laughs) It is a very thin board. Right. (laughs) Like, literally the smallest of drafts like like they're they're entering a building that previously was not entered before like there's wind in san francisco i can promise you that you know what i'm saying whatever the board falls they're he's freaking out over it uh sh- great uh i would be more inclined of any of this stuff to believe the paint can because i feel like you still could have rigged that right like of course i we we can't see what's going on behind the scenes. It's not like they used fishing line because you would see the fishing line in like the camera, but like I don't know. That looked more believable to me than this fucking board. Yeah. Um they see another XLS figure on a pillar and for some reason they're thinking like it's the little girl. I don't know. Uh we're starting to wrap up now. Um Zach refers to the investigation that they just showed us as quote unquote iconic. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and there's a shot of Zach on the ferry, like leaving the island, and it says, "We de- as we depart Angel Island, we stare back at the eyes of the devil within." God, he's such a fucking weirdo. <laughs> the end. That's it. I. It's, <laughs> it's just it's again just baffling to me that this is a show. It. <laughs> it's. It's very good. It's so insane. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like they just found, like, three of the fucking most paranoid people on Earth. And were just like, hey, go into this abandoned building for the night. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, it's very weird to me because, like, the earlier... I don't know if they're just trying to, like... Obviously, they're trying to, like, you know act it up for television or whatever make it dramatic but it's like they weren't really all like Aaron always was kind of um flighty like he would get spooked pretty easily um but Zach wasn't like that in the beginning and like you know he did that whole thing where he was like I never believe in ghosts until I met one and he's saying that like the ghost he encountered that made him start on his journey was a demon like he's he's like so into demons right And uh, he's like, okay, so now I'm just going to go around and get, like, other evidence. And so I I don't know if they're trying to make it seem like throughout the course of his investigation, he's saying he can't see anymore, he can't, his lungs don't work or whatever. So I don't know if they're trying to be like, well, all of these things have happened to him, so now he's, like, scared because he's been personally attacked and possessed and, like, all this stuff. But I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Here we are at this point. Uh, Yeah fucking bunch of weirdos <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, definitely um all right let's see i don't think i've looked at any news at all this week uh let's pull up let's see if anything looks interesting or not uh no no <laughs> I'm going to try and find another pickle. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, like, all... I feel like it's just constantly just, like, this movie's doing well in theaters, horror's back, and it's like, come on. Shut up. Oh, yeah. The, the only thing that I saw, like, over the couple days that I was on vacation was about long legs, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, I think long legs was something, like, Neon's highest grossing movie or some shit I'll watch it but I don't need you to inundate me with it like uh alright did uh have you watched anything since the last time we recorded 
Um, let's see. On the plane, I tried to watch Lisa Frankenstein. And I had to turn it off because... Mm, bad. <laughs> um, I really wanted to like it, too, because the idea of it seemed very, like for lack of a better term, like, early Tim Burton-esque. And, like, I was like, oh, this is cute, PG-13, like, little, you know, rom-com between a girl and, like, a zombie boy. Great, I love it. And not for me at all. It's, again, one of those movies that, like, I, I'm i confused about who it's for because, like, there were things in, like the little that I watched, I think I probably watched like half an hour or something like that. This was on my first flight that we flew for uh, 40 minutes and then turned around and waited for three hours for our second plane. Uh, So I I didn't finish watching it, but there's like things that happened that I just feel were not appropriate for like teen, like like if it's PG-13, but maybe I don't know. I don't know. So I, I turned it off, did not like it. Then I watched Night Swim on the plane also, uh, which is really disappointing to me because like the movie itself and the story, like the story could have been interesting. The movie itself was like not good, but the cinematography was so good. Like there were so many cool shots and the movie was shot really well that I really wanted it to be good, but it just wasn't. Yeah, I remember like, everyone being like really hyped for that movie and then being like, oh, this is actually really boring. No, um, just, you know, and like, I don't know. The the overall story of it kind of didn't make a lot of sense, and I feel like just go watch Dead Man's Float, like, honestly. But, again, the, sh- the cinema, whoever, I should look up who the cinematographer was because, like, oh, there were so many cool shots. And it was, like, nighttime on the plane, too, so it was, like, perfect atmosphere. It just did not hold up. Um, I feel like the only other thing I watched was I watched The Cable Guy, which I was, like, texting you about. So I'm just going to say pretty good. Pretty weird good movie. Um... Even though you know my feelings about Matthew Broderick, but yeah, we won't speak about that. And then I watched the uh, Twilight Zone movie from 1983. Uh, I didn't really care for it, actually. I don't. Is it the, that's the one you get to see Vic Morrow get killed in, I think, right? It's in 1983. I, um, like one of them takes place in like there's like a part in like Vietnam or some shit. It's possible. No, well, this was the one that had, like, Dan Aykroyd, Scatman Carruthers, John Lithgow. Yeah, Vic Morrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to be really honest. I fell asleep during part of it, so I probably missed that that part. But the segments I did see, I love the John Lithgow one. Obviously, that's the the plain one, uh, which I think iconic. I still liked it. The very, very first, like, sketch in the movie has so many slurs in it and like I would just was taken aback I was like oh my goodness what very crazy um not my favorite and then I watched something that is my shout out and <laughs> that's right. it um I watched Big Trouble in Little China like four times because of course, as one does. Listed, like there's like three commentary tracks on the blu-ray or something the <laughs> the kurt russell john carpenter one is super fun anytime those two are together it's always fun uh and then the only other new thing i watched was this hungarian animated movie called bubble bath from like 1979 oh. that story-wise was kind of whatever but the animation was like insane and really good hmm. um I think it was Def Crocodile that put out the Blu-ray. They've been releasing like a bunch of like weird, like, like 70s animated stuff recently, and it's all mm-hmm. like stuff from like the Czech Republic or like Ukraine or fucking whatever. And it's all like really interesting and weird and just like crazy. Uh, and then there's like a bunch of like the the directors 
had like a bunch of animated shorts on it but I watched all those I think that's it uh just been fucking working and getting my stupid tooth drilled into <laughs> it. Uh, every day yeah I'm gonna go Thursday and then next week as well <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Welcome to my life last year. Yeah, this is all for like one tooth. It sucks. I know. <laughs> um, all right, what's your shout out? My anti shout out is Delta. Yeah, Shane also was flying at the same time you did and dealt with like oh my three, god four hour like delays and shit. I am not going to go into it because nobody cares. But I never wanted to be somebody that said oh, I've spent the night at the airport uh but now i have and i i do not thank delta for that at all and i think the thing that bothers me is that like the and it was unrelated to all of that shit that happened with the scheduling the thing microsoft whatever going down because that was the week before oh no yeah they're still dealing with that shit like the the wawas around here are like still like their their gas pumps like still can't take cards they have to like go inside to deal with it okay that's crazy but yeah it was like all unrelated and i think the thing that like bothers me about it is that like i understand that flying is a privilege like i get that but it's a service that we're using and the thing that really bothered me is that like on our way home we had we had trouble going to where we were going and on the way back and on the way back we were supposed to be taking a red eye and they didn't tell us until like an hour before our flight so we had been at the i almost said hospital we'd been at the airport already when they like sent us a text that was like oh your flight is delayed three hours and we're like excuse me because that would force us to miss our connection and they just like didn't offer any solution there wasn't an agent at the gate to like help anybody figure out what was supposed to be happening and it's not like we were the only people making a connection that was gonna be missed it was like multiple people and they just like literally were just like shrug so that just like really rubs me the wrong way like you can't just like have a company and be like "Mm, figure it out you know what i'm saying like (laughs) see how much you have to like push and sort of like (laughs) threaten them to get like any sort of like anything like when my mom and I got stuck trying to just like literally our our flight should have been like an hour back from New York City to Dayton yeah and like we were stuck for like 36 hours and it was like I had to literally be like you have made me miss two days of work and like we're like stuck in these airports like the fucking bare minimum you could do is give us like food vouchers right and shit and like like it didn't matter i was stuck in an airport where like the only thing i could eat is i had to wait for like burger king to open and get like their fucking french toast sticks because it was like the only vegan option but i was like like you literally like have cost me i don't know like four hundred dollars from like not being able to work and like on top of like everything else like the fucking give us anything like well and that too it's like not cheap to fly no. like you're spending hundreds of dollars to be treated this way it's just like insane and then the thing that like really like was like hard like for us too it's like because we were doing a run and like we weren't stuck for that long like 36 hours right we were just it was like over a little over 24 hours of traveling like because we had to drive three hours to the airport and then we were supposed to do the red eye and then you know right um the times that we were at the airport was after everything was closed and we waited until 6 a.m to get on a flight that nothing was open yet yeah like so i was just like i am fucking starving and then we get on the plane we almost did not get on the plane we were standby the counter tried to ask us to give up our seats and i was like we're on standby we physically don't have seats to give up she tried to argue with me about that and i was like lady 
I think I would know if I had seats on this freaking plane. We almost didn't get on. We were the last two people to board. Thank God. Like, I still can't even believe we got on. But then we're like sitting there and I somehow somebody else gave up their seat. So I was in their seat and they were sitting in comfort plus, which is like great. Right. <laughs> The person in front of me asked about um, food because normally they have like food for purchase, like sandwiches or snack boxes or whatever. And Lydia's like, oh, they didn't. Sorry. Uh, like, we don't have them. They didn't stock us with them. And it's a six hour flight. So I'm like, perfect. I'll take five bags of sub chips, please. <laughs> I'm so fucking hungry. And and it's just like the the lack of accountability for something that you're spending so much money on. I think it's just it's, what drives me crazy. Yeah, it's but, the fucking worst. Like, it's. I would do anything to just have, like, a fucking bullet train that went from, like, New York City to Los I know, Angeles or yeah. something. That just, like, fine. Two days. I'll take the two-day fucking train trip over, like, an airline at this point. No, oh, it's, like, so insane to me how bad our, like, travel infrastructure yeah, it's is. it's terrible. Like... It's, like... <laughs> Shane, Shane was telling me, like, dude, like, he was just flying at the same time you were that, like, one of his planes was just delayed because they couldn't find a flight crew for it. And I'm like, how the fuck do that, you not that, have a flight crew? No, that's what happened to me, too. That's why our red eye was canceled. Like, how are you and scheduling like, flights that you don't have a crew set up for? <laughs> I don't know, because I was also like, give me two people, don't give us drinks even. Like, I don't care. I want it. I want to go home. Yeah, like, I just want to go home. <laughs> that was the thing. That was, like, the, the, like, so when my mom and I got, like, stuck... Like, we we were supposed to go from New York to, like, Philly or Pittsburgh or whatever, have, like, a, a hour delay or, you know, layover, then fly into Dayton. I don't know why it wasn't just a straight flight. I didn't. It, I, well, it, because know, why would it be? I didn't book it, but I was like, fuck it, whatever. And so we end up getting to Philly or Pittsburgh. I forget which one it was. And, like, whatever, we, we had a six-hour delay for whatever reason. And so that... We ended up, I forget why, for some reason we had to, like, then go, like, fly. Oh, yeah, that was right. So, we got there, and they were like, uh, I think we were delayed in New York City and got to Philly. And, like, by the time we landed and got off the plane, our connecting flight had left. Yeah. And so, they were like, okay, so, like, our your best option is uh, wait till tomorrow, or you could fly into North Carolina, and North Carolina fly into, like, Dayton. And we were like, <laughs> fine, whatever, we'll do that. So we fly to North Carolina. The flight leaving to North Carolina was delayed for an hour and a half because they couldn't find a coffee pot for the plane. Great. And I was like, who the that. fuck cares? Take off. Yeah. And so we land in North Carolina at like, I don't know, 1130 at night. And so there's no more flights leaving. So we had to stay there. The next day, we get on the flight, get halfway to Dayton, and they have to turn around and go back to North Carolina because of weather. Yeah. And then we had another, like, four-hour layover or some shit. And they, I was like, at that point, I was like, like, they're trying to find seats for us. They're like, well, there's none sitting together. I was like, I don't fucking care. Yeah, Set no. me anywhere. Put me on the fucking wing. Get me fucking home. <laughs> Like, I was like, I'm so fucking tired of being in an airport. This is garbage. <laughs> you guys are yeah, the fucking the worst. Is like the worst place ever to be. Like, I would pick the DMV over the airport. God, it's, honestly, it's so fucking shitty. Like, just the fucking worst. And like, so yeah, Chris and I were like, we decline all uh, invitations for the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. Because, okay, because I said, yeah, you know, because I flew earlier, so our trip was in July, it's August now, obviously, but it was, like, the last trip of July, and then the first week of July, I flew, and that's when, on the way home, our plane, we were just, like, sitting on the plane on the taxi, like, on the strip or whatever for an hour, and that's when I got, like, probably COVID, if I'm honest with you, it probably was, and then I was sick for, like, 14 days, like, I can't do it, like, do not, nobody get married don't do anything if you want me to come this year because I'm not doing it. I'm really not. Anyway, I said I wasn't going to get into it, and I did. <laughs> but my actual good shout-out is the animated series Batman and Cape Crusader, which I'm not going to go into super detail about because you have to watch it, and then we'll talk about it. But it is, like, I really needed it. It's so 
good. It's only 10 episodes, so it's, like, pretty easy watch. Um, but it's, like, like, often we talk about how Batman the, the Animated Series is, like, one of the best things ever to exist. And, like, I still think it is. But Cave Crusader does such a good job of, like, taking that literal like the same style with like the gorgeous like backgrounds and then just like updating it and making the people and the shading better and so it's like so got the same like atmosphere but they updated so many things about it that are just like some people are gonna be mad about it but i ate that shit up i thought it was so good i think the last episode got me so good i was like sobbing it's it's literally so good drop everything and go watch it it's so I think good literally the only thing i've seen about it is uh i think is that the one where uh the penguin is female mm-hmm. that's yeah people being like been out of shape about it it's like who cares oh sure <laughs> if they were mad about that just wait uh it's so good though um yeah and it kind of went back to that like classic episode thing where it's like every episode is like a different character they pull they pull some characters that are like lesser known one character that i think had never been animated before and it's just like it's great it's really good so i hope if it hasn't been renewed i hope they renew it oh uh, because I don't know if it's amazing I've seen anything about it specifically i honestly don't even think i realized it was out yet until you i so it. like i remember talking about it like forever ago when they kind of like announced that it was like, kind of going to be a thing because I remember uh, JJ Abrams was like signed on for it and I was like oh interesting and we kind of just chatted about it I had no idea then when we got home uh, we have like a uh, whatever the Amazon TV is in our bedroom and they show just like of course ads but I saw the ad for it on there and I was like no way it's all out they dumped it all at once which I love um, so yeah I had no idea yeah, stop doing fucking week by week no, for this shit. Just I drop hate it. it all at once. I, I, I don't it. need you to em- em- emulate TV for me. Just give it all to me at once. I'm gonna. I want to binge it. I don't want a week to week. Yeah, I hate it. Like I, I understand like stuff that's actively airing on TV, but if it's like a straight oh, streaming sure. thing, then like fucking yeah. just dump it on there. Oh, the already renewed Batman Caped Crusader season two is in the works for it is on Prime. If I didn't say that, yay! It's already renewed. Please, I need it yesterday. Oh my god! Like two years to wait. (laughs) Oh my god! I'm like literally enamored with it. I love it so much. You're gonna be like, it's fine. No, you're gonna like it. You will like it. It's it's so good. I will watch anything Batman and find at least something enjoyable in it even the stuff i don't like so there's no way you won't like it it's really good um, i can't wait to talk about it my shout out it's the new sanagi ep everything is longing super good i think i'm finally gonna see them in september they're playing uh in brooklyn opening for respire and i think i'm gonna go to that actively going to things in the next two months and I'm already exhausted <laughs> like the like, five things I've bought tickets for <laughs> there's been a few shows finally pop up around here and we're always like oh yeah we're definitely gonna go we do not well like, <laughs> we I, not like I'm constantly like I want to go to this then I'm like ah, I'm not going to that but I actively saw so oh, going yeah. this month uh I like three days in a row uh Breaking Pangea oh my is going to headline <laughs> show like 10 minutes for me so I'm definitely going to that. You gotta. Um, Erica is going to be in New York City and then Philly the two days after that doing screenings of Run and Kill, an untold story for her book. So I'm going to both of those. And then in September, that Respire show is in Brooklyn, I think. And then towards the end of the month, that Boy Sets Fire show in Philly I'm going to. Yeah. Which I'm so jealous. So excited for because it it's a matinee and over by like five thirty. <laughs> Listen, you get like how you it could not yeah. even be more perfect. Uh, like better lovers just announced they're doing a tour in like November with like full of hell. So I think we're gonna go to that. There was something else that I was like we were talking about getting tickets to, and so I'm already like so tired. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Next week, not sure what order i'm gonna release these uh because yeah. i mean this will this will be out and then i'm recording 
at least fucking three episodes this week. <laughs> uh, so it'll either be all three of us will be back finally for an episode on Monster NATO, which I was told is very bad. And I was like, yeah, I assumed. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, and then Lori and I are doing an episode on the Justin Pearson documentary uh, "Don't Fall in Love with Yourself." Uh, we're gonna talk about the locust and noisy music for a while. So, oh, you can talk about um, what was that show? Uncle Uncle Grandpa. No, uh, I think he did a voice. Isn't that. isn't no? Isn't that the guy that was like on that ghost show I was watching? And I was like, why do you know who that guy is? Oh, maybe. That sounds familiar. Uh, I like said, okay, oh, okay. That was like the weirdest thing ever. And I'm pretty sure it was him. Shit, what was it? It might have been my ghost story. I'll have to look. I'll look. Uh, yeah, that sounds familiar. He's like, there's a thing in the 90s where him and like three of his friends lied their way out of Jerry Springer. And shit. <laughs> and like, that's like the one thing like most people no if they don't know his music they're like oh yeah i remember him on like jerry springer but what's his name justin pearson he's in like most notably the locust but he's in like so many bands and all of them are good yeah okay um it was because he was somewhere it was my ghost story he was somewhere filming a music video and the music video was all crazy and then i just like sent you a picture of him and you were like I was like shook that you knew who that guy was because I, I don't music video it was. I don't know. Cause like, I know like the first music video the Locust made is in like a fucking like sewer thing essentially. Like they're all playing, but they're all too tall for how like high the the ceiling is, so they're like crouched over in this like weird like sewer looking area but I guess I can't imagine that was it <laughs> no um it was uh let's see so the episode is season two episode one an entity in bed it says a punk musician has a hair raising experience at a hospital of horrors and has terrifying photos to go along with it so it was at a, a hospital oh, weird with somebody named Lenora Claire yeah, I don't know who that is. Yeah, I don't either. But it says as self. I mean, obviously, it's a uh, it's a ghost yeah. a ghost story, whatever. Um, anyways, so uh, that's my two cents about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> one of those will be next. I'm not sure what order I'm gonna put them out in. Um. All right. If you'd like to support us, you can join our Patreon at patreoncom slash Uh, we'll have a bunch of bonus shit I think soon because Katie and I are going to do an episode on that Batman cartoon um we have assuming they're all still streaming we're supposed to do that Omen one and then probably not (laughs) we have we have to do Showgirls at some point and then I have an idea to sort of revamp the Patreon that I will tell you about when we're done recording um I'm not traveling anywhere else, yeah. so we should be good for the year. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, patreoncom slash for podcast. You can leave us a rating and review on iTunes, and Spotify, and all that shit. You can follow Kit at Hidden Kit's Three and Catchification of Blood. You can follow Katie at Werewolf Face and join Katie's Patreon at patreoncom slash Werewolf Face. Listen about the podcast NK Movie Club. Um, yeah, something will be next week one of those two monster dato or the justin pearson documentary <laughs> yeah something will be there um all right i hope a little girl says i love you do you love me <laughs> why scariest job in the world <laughs> <laughs>